Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. I'm Teacher Sam, your online learning buddy. I'm sure tapos ka na sa pagsulat na yung chapter 1. Naisulat mo na ang introduction, theoretical conceptual framework, problem statement, and hypothesis, pati na rin ang significance of the study, scope and limitation, and definition of terms. Sa so, mga tapos na, congratulations! At sa mga nahihirapan at hindi alam gawin paano sulatin ang chapter 1, ay attach in this video yung mga links para matutunan mo ang mga dapat gawin para maisulat ang chapter 1. So, how to write the chapter 2? Ang chapter 2 ay yung tinatawag natin RRL or Review of Related Literature. Ang pagsulat ng chapter 2 ay nakadepende ayon sa institutional format. Ito yung format na nirequire ng mga universities, public schools, and even private institutions. Kadalasan ang chapter 2 ay binubuo ng dalawang sections, Related Literature at Related Studies. Sa related literature, isusulat natin dito yung mga concepts and theories ng ating mga variables. At yun namang related studies, isusulat natin dito yung mga significant findings na related sa ating study. It is very important to write comprehensive, organized, and relevant concepts, theories, and significant findings na related sa ating study dahil pwede natin itong gamitin to support the results and discussion na makikita natin sa chapter 4. So, kung gusto mong malaman kung paano nga basulatin ang chapter 2, then continue watching this video. A literature review is an examination of scholarly materials that provides an overview of a subject. Literature reviews compile a list of the most relevant and notable publications on a given topic in order to provide a comprehensive overview of what has been written about it and by whom. Writing the literature review may vary. In the humanities, for example, researchers may include more assertive argument and evidence and inference of subject matter in their literature reviews, whereas in the science Says, scholars are more inclined to disclose research design and findings. These differences reflect the objectives and norms of academic in these fields of study. Kaya bago sumulat ng literature review, mahalaga na makakita ka ng isang sample na mga existing thesis or dissertation sa inyong paralan or kumonsulta sa mga experts or sa mga professors ng inyong mga field of discipline para masiguro na alam mo at naintindihan mo ang mga institutional standards. A literature review's basic component are as follows. A description of the publication, a summary of the publication's main points, a discussion of gaps in research, and an evaluation of the publication's contribution to the topic. Bakit kailangan pa nating sumulat ng literature review? A literature review gives a reader a detailed overview of previous discussions before the researcher presents his or her own in a research paper, thesis, or dissertation. Sa literature review natin malalaman yung mga assertions, arguments, at mga significant findings ng mga scholars na nakapagsagawa na ng mga research studies na similar sa study mo. So what is the best way to organize literature review? First, we have chronological. The simplest technique is to follow the progression of the issue over time, which helps the reader become familiar with it. If you use this approach, avoid merely citing and categorizing sources in chronological order. Examine the developments, key events, and major disputes that have impacted the field's direction. Ipaliliwanag mo kung paano at bakit nangyayari ang mga specific events sa pamagitan ng paggamit ng iyong sariling mga salita. Thematic. In this technique, you divide your literature review into subtopics that address different elements of the problem if you have found some repeating central themes that you will work with throughout your paper. If you're reading about women and administration, for example, major issues could be the position of women in academic institutions and second, gender role attitudes toward women as administrators in academic institutions. As a budding researcher, mas madaling makapag-organize ng literature review gamit ang thematic. Kaya I highly recommend this technique. Methodological. You can make a comparison in the findings and conclusion that arise from different approaches if you gather your sources from various areas or disciplines that use a variety of research methodologies. Halimbawa, qualitative versus quantitative research, empirical versus theoretical scholarship, or you may divide your study into three categories of sources, sociology, history, and culture. Theoretical. In this technique, 
The literature review focuses in providing the foundation for the theoretical framework in many humanities publications. It can be used to explain theoretical approaches, frameworks, and fundamental concept explanations. To develop a framework for your research, you can argue for the significance of a single theoretical approach or mix multiple theoretical concepts. The most common structure for literature review is introduction, body, and conclusion. In the introduction, you shall have an opening statement describing your research problem and argument, then have a list of major themes or publications that will be discussed in the review. In writing the introduction, define your objective. Create a hypothesis with a clear position if you're writing an argumentative paper. Make a prediction to test if you're analyzing scientific theories. You may also declare your study's purpose if you're presenting a self-contained review of publications on a particular topic. Define the objective of your work at the start so that the literature analysis is connected to a particular viewpoint, just like in this example. In this study titled Anxiety in Second language and student speaking performance their relationship the introduction starts by identifying the problem and in ending your introduction you should provide a clear thesis statement the second part of the literature review is the body. In here, provide a summary of each source's important ideas and merge them into a logical whole. Don't just repeat what other researchers have said. Add your own views and analyze the importance of findings in the context of the entire literature. Then, mention the publication's strengths and limitations. As what I have mentioned earlier, among the techniques cited, it is best to organize your literature review thematically if you are a budding researcher, just like in this example. In this study, you may have the following themes or subtopics. In writing concepts about these themes or subtopics, do your research. This means that you have to examine a selection of texts authored by relevant scholars that are most directly related to your problem and stance. Determine who the main proponents in your article's academic field are and be sure to include their most recent publications. Marami tayong mga kilalang proponents na talagang seasoned or experts na pagdating sa ganitong mga topics. So ang gagawin mo, pipili ka lang ng mga concepts or discussion niya na directly related sa problem at sa viewpoint mo. And to avoid plagiarism, you need to cite the proponent kasama ang year kung kailan ito na publish. Dahil kung hindi, aakalain ng mga readers na sa iyo galing ang mga words or sentences na inilagay mo sa literature review. In writing the body, please remember that each subtopic has its own thesis statement that that is then proven through the review of existing research, just like in this example. Then create a logical review. Consider your literature review to be the development of an argument. What were the first ideas on the problem and how did they grow and evolve in the academic discussion of these publications? In presenting the literature review, consider kung ano ang mga naunang variables sa problemo. Dapat first things first. Then integrate relevant findings of related studies in each variable. In other format, separated ang discussion ng literature and studies. In my class, I required a format in which the findings of related studies studies either local, national, or international are integrated with the discussion of the important concepts or themes of the study. In writing the body, it is important to reference, synthesize, and cite other research on every subtopic. Ibig sabihin ng synthesize ay si Koch and Terrell, si Young, and Price pareho sila ng mga assumptions, which is a large number of their subjects considered oral presentation as the most anxiety-provoking activity in the class. And the last part of literature review is the conclusion, in which you summarize the most important findings from the literature and emphasize their importance. Not only that, you have also to relate it to your main research question. So for the tips, ground summary and relevance. As you summarize each publication, tie its fundamental concepts to your thesis, hypothesis, or problem statement to provide context for its relevance. You may answer the following questions. What is the connection? How does it relate to the topic? Then, you have to determine its importance to the issue. In other words, hindi ka lang maglalagay dyan ng kung ano-anong concepts mula sa nabasa o na-research mo. Dapat yung sinabi ng isang advocate or proponent ay related sa study mo. Ang ginagawa ng iba ay nag-copy-paste lang ng mga discussion na mula sa kanilang na-research kasi they thought tama na yun kasi kapareho sila ng topic. Dapat ang isusulat natin ay related sa ating topic. Some institutions have the conclusion part after presenting the literature review just 
like in this example. Dito sa conclusion, ipoprove mo na ang yung research study fills a specific gap or it is important in a certain way. Usually in writing research paper, you have the opportunity to prove in the introduction that your research paper fills a specific gap but the literature review section allows you to set the discussion in the way you want your readers to see it. Other researchers, hindi conclusion ang kanilang ginagamit but synthesis and research gap, katulad nito. In writing our literature review, paragraphs should be well-structured. So, we have to use transition words as well as the topic sentence to make links, comparisons, and contrasts. In this example, moreover is our transition word. Marami ka pang pwedeng mapagpilian ng mga transition words in these categories, emphasis, addition, contrast, and order. Then lastly, include a list of references or works cited. Although you will mention the author's names and publication years in your text, when composing the literature review, you will still need to create comprehensive citations for each entry at the conclusion. Some schools require to have the list of references after each chapter, but others require to have the reference list after the summary, conclusion, and recommendation of the research paper. If you are writing a research proposal, then have the reference list after the last section in Chapter 3. Don't forget to follow APA, MLA, or Chicago Style Guidelines as your course requires. There you have it, e-learners. I hope you learned something from this video. If you are new in this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell para updated ka sa mga upcoming videos. See you in my next video. Happy learning!